All the images you just saw were generated entirely by AI, meaning that essentially no one person was involved in the design, the composition, or the colors, or even the style. Now today I'm going to explain exactly how I made these images, the tool that I was using, and how you can do it yourself. But if this is your first time to the channel, my name is Robin, and over at GC we like to bring you the newest and the coolest when it comes to tech. So if you like this video, make sure to check out some of our others. So the platform in question is called Midjourney. And it's a text to image generation tool, very similar to OpenAI's DALI 2 that we saw a lot of hubbub about back in April 2022. And essentially, Midjourney does the same thing, where it takes a text prompt and creates a brand new image out of that text. And what makes Midjourney and DALI 2 both incredibly interesting is that it's not taking pre-existing images and melding them together, but rather it's taking images and data sets that it's been trained on with text descriptors to generate entirely new images. So the ones that you saw earlier and some of the ones that I'm going to show you in this video, they've never <laughs> existed before. The tool is essentially just conjuring them up from nothing. So let's actually dive into Midjourney and I'm going to explain how it actually works and walk you through the process of generating an image like this. Clap sync. So let's take a look at Midjourney itself. The interesting thing about it is that it actually runs entirely through Discord. Uh, so you're just interacting with a bot. And I decided I liked it so much that I actually got a membership. And once you do that, you can actually DM the bot privately, so you're not actually bombarded with everyone else's text to image generations. When you do just sign up initially, you're given a free trial, which means you can have 25 unique image generations for life. That's it. Once you reach your 25, you've got to upgrade to actual membership, or I guess try to create a new account. Let's start off with a prompt. So to do so, you have to type imagine and then you can give your prompt. Now, this can be anything. So I'm gonna type in iPhone flip phone, and let's just see what it spits out. When the images are finished processing, it'll spit out four variations of your prompt, as well as nine buttons here. The each button is allocated to one image, you meaning upscale, so you'll get one very high res version of that image, uh, and V meaning variations. So if I were to choose V1, it would spit out four more variations in the style of this image. So I can kind of tell the machine, this is the direction I want to go down. But let's take a quick look at what it actually spat out. It didn't really interpret it the way I thought it would. And that's kind of part of the learning curve when it comes to Midjourney, is really making the prompts as descriptive as possible, because everything that you don't put in will be randomized and left up to chance. So how about I put in something like iPhone in the style of a 2005 flip phone. And let's see, well, hold on. I gotta put in the dash imagine prompt and paste that back in. And let's see what that spits out. So the way I'm doing it right now is quite an interesting method of say prototyping things or imagining what something could look like. Whereas we could just go in a total art direction and spit out something that is 100% unique and far more artistic in an approach. So while this is processing, let's put in imagine prompt a dark alley 
at night, film noir, uh, black and white, grain, cinematic, moody, atmospheric. And by default, Midjourney will spit out just one by one images, just square, but you can change the aspect ratio by putting dash dash, AR, space, and the aspect ratios you want. So seeing as I want to do something a little bit more cinematic, uh, let's put in two to one and see what it spits out. But let's take a look at the iPhone pictures. So <laughs> we're getting something a little bit closer. So as you can see, it looks almost a little bit more like what, what smartphones looked like back in like 2007 with like the Samsung Taco series and whatnot. So our film noir scene is done. And as you can see, it spat out four like ridiculously beautiful images. But if you don't like any of those images, you can just hit refresh and it'll spit out four more. But say you do like one of the images, say I'm quite a fan of number three here, I can choose to up res number three and it's gonna give me a much more detailed, clearer look at that image. So you could put in that same prompt as many times as you want, but you'll never get the exact same image put out twice. Every single time you do this, it's gonna be a totally unique image. Even though it might look somewhat similar, it's never gonna be the exact same thing twice. Once you've used up your free trial and you wanna upgrade your membership, you can just go to midjourney.com on your account and you can head down and see the different memberships available. Now, the current one that I'm on is just the basic membership, which is $10 US a month. And for that, you get 200 image generations per month. So at the end of the month, that resets and you have 200 more. If you want unlimited image generations, then you can subscribe to the standard membership, which is 30 US a month. So what exactly does this mean for artists and graphic designers and the like? Well, I think similar to how TikTok has brought down the barrier of entry for video content sharing and storytelling, I think this sort of AI generation art is bringing down the barrier to entry for creating beautiful artwork. So instead of the mark of excellence being your technical abilities, rather it's now your ideas. It's the prompts, it's, it's what you can come up with to generate a beautiful image or an image that tends to your needs. So it's pretty similar to what happens when you become a higher up in a creative agency or something. You're no longer the one physically creating the images, rather you're the one who's coming up with your ideas. You're being paid to be an idea person. So what these tools do is give everyone the means of being a creative director. All right, so everyone could be a creative director. Very good. It's been a week since I shot this A-roll and it's given me a chance to use Midjourney a lot more. So I have a few more thoughts that I just want to add to this. The first thing is that since I shot this A-roll, Midjourney has actually become an open beta. So now anyone can join it. You don't need an invitation like previously needed. Secondly is the question of ethics. Midjourney, it's the only one that's actually totally open now. And interestingly enough, there's no talk about ethics when you join. They don't force you to sit down. But what they have done is actually ban a number of words. One of those words being nude. So you can't just put in so-and-so celebrity nude and then put these pictures up online. They've actually banned a good few words from actually being used at all. The other thing that has really altered the way I think about this uh, software or platform since shooting the A-roll is that in my initial piece, I was kind of talking about how this is great for prototyping, uh, designs and whatnot, which it absolutely is, um, and how it, it can kind of give you a great jumping off point for artwork. But since actually messing around with it a lot more, I've actually found that the artwork it generates is a lot more than just a jumping off point. I put in a, a totally random prompt. It wasn't anything that I intentionally described. And the artwork that it spat out gave me a genuine emotional response. 
like as if it was done by a person. I'm gonna put it up on screen now. And the most ridiculous thing about this is that this prompt <laughs> was entirely generated by, I guess you could say AI, as in, <laughs> I went into the predictive words uh, in iMessage and I just put in wow and then I hit every other word that popped up until it seemed like I had a full sentence or paragraph. And the image that it put out blew me away when I first saw it. I, I, I couldn't believe everything from the composition, the color choice, the technique <laughs> that was being used. I, 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 I honestly, looking at it, felt emotional. It, it conjured up other images and feelings in my head that I never thought AI-generated art could do. Everything else prior to that, I was like, oh wow, like, this looks amazing. This looks really great. I can't believe it. But nothing actually gave me that emotional response as pretentious as it sounds. Nothing gave me an emotional response quite like those images. And what's so scary is that the prompt itself was also totally just randomly generated. So I don't have a full conclusion <laughs> drawn up yet on what this means. I don't know, I'm, I'm genuinely at a loss for words when it comes to this now. Honestly, it's an open beta now. I really, really encourage you to give it a try, see what it can do. And uh, anyway, let's go back to Robin from a week ago. Now it's your turn. I wanna hear from you. Are you excited by this sort of AI generated art or are you worried by it? Are you an artist yourself? Is this something that you would use or do you think this is gonna be something that's gonna replace you? Please leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. I'm really, truly interested in what you have to say. So if you've enjoyed the video, you can let us know by liking or subscribing. And if you've made it this far, I really appreciate it. My name's Robin, and if you liked this video, we've got one just as good right here, which I'd recommend checking out right now. Mm.